Hey, it's Eric O'Keach with fitnessbusinessinterviews.com, and I'm honored to have one of the greats with me today, and that is Sean Phillips. Sean's a best-selling author, he's a performance coach, and he's one of the pioneers of the performance nutrition industry. And with his brother, he's helped to create one of the most successful sports nutrition companies in the world, that's EAS, and it is my honor and privilege to have Sean here with me today. So, Sean, thanks so much, man. I appreciate your time. Uh, it's great to be here, Eric. Thanks for having me on. appreciate it. Nice to uh, get some FaceTime with you and be able to chat a little bit. Very cool. Now, you've been in the industry for quite a while, you know, 20 plus years. Step back a little bit, just a little bit of uh, brief background, how you kind of got into the health and fitness side of things. Well, um, I was an athlete my whole life. You know, I grew up in athletics and uh, somewhere in between high school and college, I got into bodybuilding and I figured out that, uh, you know, for me, that that personal self-expression, you know, doing something myself took uh you know, really, I kind of ran with that more and, you know, versus the team game because I was going to college to play football and I started training and I was like, man, this is going to be the deal. So I, you know, that that just led from training into training into products. And that was the evolution of really what became, you know, by our early 20s, Bill and I had newsletters and mm -hmm. products and all that stuff. So, you know, I've been doing this stuff, like I say, for 25 years now. All right. Now you were going to school for football uh, and doing all of that. At what point was it where you were there? You're like, you know, maybe I want to start training people and, you know, help people become get in better shape or athletic. Well, I, I, I really just trained myself for the first few years. And uh, then I, you know, it's like everybody, I think, goes through a phase of becoming like a personal trainer or something. And I took that on for a number of years. You know, I ended up uh, in my early 20s, ended up in Venice, California, you know, mm -hmm. out in L.A. doing that gig. And, um, you know, I had managed to, you know, put on a good bit of muscle and was enjoying that. But uh I, I just, you know, I figured out probably by age two years of training, it kind of cured me of it. I figured out I wasn't a good trainer. I was a great training scientist. So like I understand okay. it real well, but I'm not that great at helping people um, like having the patience. Right. Right. It's just it takes some patience. And, you know, I, I so much more wanted to figure things out than I wanted to motivate people. Like if you're motivated, I'll help you all day long. But if you want me to be your source of motivation, I was kind of like, eh, not so much. Okay. So what did you do with yourself? You know, you went through, you were getting in great shape two years doing it. You realized you weren't that great at training and helping others. What was, like, what were you doing for income? What were you doing at that time? Um, I'd write, I'd write, you know, I started writing stuff. Uh, I started okay. early on really studying kind of diet and strength training and all this stuff. And I probably by, um, early nineties had written the first computerized strength training program. Mm -hmm. Um, it was called power building. And, uh, I mean, heck it's been 20 years and I still get requests for it all the time. Really? Wow. Yeah, I, I was you, you was using computer systems before they were really cool. Before there was the internet, um, I had uh, and I still have the software. It's amazing stuff. But what my thought was, if I could have a black box of training and I could run you through, um, you know, like strength tests and challenges and put you on custom programs, then I could spend an infinite amount of time building the program as long as I could recreate that thousands of times, and I didn't have to then charge you a million dollars just to train you once, you know. Right. Okay. Now, were you, I mean, you created this program, so you obviously had some kind of technical background. Was it something that you just loved? Did you go to school for it? How did you No, I actually stuff? didn't. I was in school for engineering, and um, I taught myself how to code. Um, kind of a job I was working, though I was going to school at night, I figured out how to run, uh, write code, and I wrote in Fox Pro, and I wrote in C code, and then I just started writing code. And um, for EAS, I, I wrote all the original software for all the marketing systems and phone systems and all our sales systems, too. Okay, and with, with power building, how did you go about, I guess, marketing that, getting people on it and trying it and using it? Um, well, I got brochures right over there on the wall. <laughs> 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 if I could point right there. Um, some of the classic stuff. I, you know, I put the notebooks. I, I'm, you know, because I couldn't deliver electronically, actually, I had to deliver right. physical product. Um, you know, we wrote stuff in our newsletters and, and I wrote about it in muscle media a lot and, okay. um, and it was just, you know, sold that way. And, you know, I was at that time I was training a lot of celebrity people. I, Stallone was a huge follower of my stuff, you know, okay. so he'd be on tonight show talking about it and he was always hooking up all Hollywood with it. So I was, you know, I was computer training before computer training was hip. Okay. So muscle media and that whole publishing part came about before power building. Um, power building was there first. Um, okay. we were doing it in the newsletter, but there was a newsletter, you know, the natural supplement, um, review, which was an, or the review, but there was a natural supplement newsletter mm -hmm. that was predates muscle media. Muscle media evolved out of that old uh, newsletter. Right. 
it's amazing. One of the things, you know, we were talking about Facebook before we got on here. One of the things I get from Facebook is all these people, I'll be talking to them. They're going, you know, right there on my desk is all the natural supplement newsletters mm-hmm. that have all the binders in front of them 20 years later. I'm going, that's amazing. Right. Okay. So you were, you were there working muscle media, Mile High Publishing um, with yeah. your brother, getting that whole thing all started and, and going, what were the early days like? Um, crazy. <laughs> kind of like, like the late later days. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, I mean, really, uh, even, you know, I mean, it, it kind of goes through the theme, even when we had the, you know, I, I work at a mile from the old EAS building right now. So I've mm-hmm. been in this office park for 20 some years and, uh, you know, I mean, even, even when we had the big building and all our great cars out front, I mean, heck we go to work, uh, 16 hour days, six, seven days a week. That mm-hmm. was just it. You know, I mean, uh, some of the neighbor guys, you know, have businesses around here would always laugh. We still laugh about it. Right. It's like we could never go to office to work before you guys get there. And we could always left before you left because mm-hmm. your cars were always there, you know. So yeah, absolutely. Now, you were working with your brother, Bill, at the time um, you were creating everything. What was it like early on, you know, in the early stages of that working with family and working with him? Um, easy. It was a dream come true. Perfect. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 um, right. you know, I mean, there, you always re- reflect on the fun part and you remember some of the extreme parts, you know, right. and it, it was fun. It was a lot of work. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's working with family stuff and we had a lot of family at EAS. I mean, you know, my mom, my dad, my sister, uh, in-laws, cousins, um, okay. half, half the staff were guys we went to grade school with, you know, I mean, it was, it was, a uh, nepotism 101, you know? Interesting. Because you know? a lot of guys, I mean, who are watching this, you know, they have small businesses. You guys are obviously... Starting out smaller, but you were growing big and you were working with family. And I'm just curious about that dynamic because a lot of people in a smaller business doing a fitness thing, it's just one person or two people. So um, you being the older brother uh, in this business, did you pull, did you have any weight? You know, were you like, hey, listen, I'm older than you. I'll kick your ass if you don't you know, do what I tell you, that kind of thing. <laughs> well, I maybe, maybe because he did credit me in the front of body for life with the guy who kicked his ass all the time. So. Right. Um, perhaps, uh, you know, it's, it's tough. It, um, but at the same time, I think in hindsight, one thing you look back on, you know, 10 years removed from EAS now, which is hard to believe. Right. Um, you look back on the power of family, which is family gets family and you can put mm-hmm. up with stuff and get stuff done and you don't have to communicate things a million times. And there's a lot of no, you know, there's a lot of inherent knowledge. So, I mean, that makes a huge difference really. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's hard. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I think about, um, bands or musical groups sometimes you get a band together that works together and then you try to replace the drummer and stuff and it's hell because you got to recreate the whole language over again so um you know and it's it's nobody nobody has the same kind of intense dysfunction that the family has so you know y'all it's it's both wonderful codependence and dysfunctional so right okay now you guys when you're back doing muscle media you're doing that things were growing successfully where was it in that part where it transitioned where you're like all right let's really turn this into something else because i know you went out you guys didn't start eas you bought no. EAS. is that right yeah well um yeah yes uh yeah i mean really what happened is we got the metrics thing right so we kicked off with dr conley right mm-hmm. and uh metrics and uh you know that was a good good relationship and really got our feet wet in this whole industry and you know we were able to invent the first uh meal replacement shake really i mean what you know metrics was an advanced kind of protein delivery system and then we went into the packets and i still love the occasionally one of the running jokes we have is the uh um you know like with full strength my current nutrition shake i have 14 packets in there people go but you have to have 20 packets in there and i'm like well why do you have to have 20 and I'm like, well that's the number and i'm like well i was there when we made the number how many should we put in a box so 20. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to do a different number. It's right. like, but everybody does 20, you know, and I'm like, because that's the number. Well, um, we just made that up. It wasn't technically proven. So but metrics, we, we got to a certain point where metrics was just kind of mm-hmm. like a dead end street. You know, okay, right. Conley, great guy, but, you know, we prefer to do something else. So we separated, went different ways, had a non-compete for a year. And, um, we, you know, we're looking for something different, something else. And um, I kind of stumbled into this thing called creatine. And uh, I didn't really know what it was. I'd read a little bit about it and I had some around and um, I had uh, finally just, I probably had it for a year and I finally tried it and I put on 12 pounds in about a week. Wow. Okay. And uh, I was like, and I, and I walked into Bill's office and I said, I, I don't know what this stuff is, but we got to be the biggest sellers of this stuff on earth because this stuff works. Mm-hmm. And that, that led us downstream because it was, it was from a company called California Body Club, mm-hmm. which then had turned into AS. So, um, and, uh, that became the opportunity to go out and find EAS and the original launchers of creatine and buy it. 
Okay, and what was, when you guys first bought EAS, I mean, that was one of their products, but what was their business like at the time before you bought it? Was it just a small, you know, rinky-dink thing, and then you said, all right, we're going to just revamp it? What was that like when you bought it? Um, it was, it wasn't much. I mean, I don't know exactly. I don't remember exactly what the sales numbers was, but it was kind of a California local thing. It wasn't like a big national advertising deal. I don't think anybody ever heard of it. I'd never heard of it, you know? Um, and I think they hadn't, they hadn't changed the name to EAS for very long when we got it. It had been, you know, California body club went over to EAS and, uh, um, so it was just, you know, it was just buying a small company that had some scientists and some science and they didn't have any myoplex or any nutrition shakes. They had glutamine based products and, um, creatine. Okay. And when you guys first started, what was your role in the business? Um, I was usually an observer. I sat back and watched a lot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know. It's one of those things. It's, uh, yeah. Everybody, everybody just does whatever they're supposed to do. And, you know, I mean, I think that uh, whether it was marketing, writing, modeling, mm -hmm. um, keeping the place together, uh, studying business, marketing, you know, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I took a, a million different roles, you know, and it's just right. it's just you did whatever you needed to do. And um, I tried to make sure I didn't really have a title because if you had a title, then you just had a target on your head. And uh, everybody had a lot of structures around the place. But. You know, I did a, did about everything, everything you could do. And um, okay. the last, co last couple of years at EAS, I had uh, intentionally taken over Growth of International just because I wanted to travel. I knew one day I'd have a family, and I figure, you know, you know things are moving around here. And I think International was running about, you know, $6 million a year, and I could see the potential, you know. And I think uh, we got it up to about thirty five before we got rid of it. Right. Now, I was curious about the international side of things because you did that. Obviously, you guys were growing really well. What was it that made you say, all right, we need to get into the international market? Uh, demand. Demand said it, really. I mean, demand, yeah, it polled everywhere. I mean, the, the poll. And then the, um, the pieces about uh, international really were, um, you know, figuring out how to run a market and how mm -hmm. to get, you know, I mean, a product, you know, I mean, when you're a small scale, a lot of guys that run smaller companies, you can get away without, you know, custom labeling and, and reformulating and all that stuff. But you get big enough and you can't do that. So you got to reformulate. You got to get your... Um, people out there you know we went with a model of using local people to run independent businesses independent distributors and it was a it was a really successful model we did a great job with it and um, it was also good fun did you come across you know first venturing internationally did you come across you know a lot of red tape um, regulations that you had to deal with oh it's unbelievable it's truly unbelievable I mean even just getting something into Canada but uh, you start going over to Europe UK Australia I mean it's I mean, you really do. One of the things you get a great respect for when you do that is the uh, a strong appreciation for the freedoms in America. Mm -hmm. And you know, while while I'll say all day long that the supplement industry um, as a whole has a whole lot of um, uh, there's a lot of sliminess in it. There's a yeah. lot of you know snake oil salesmen, and it's unfortunate because they're not really the people that have the heart in it. The people that are most revolting in, in, in the supplements are really abusing the supplements. They're not the ones carrying the passion for it. So it, it, it's kind of like a party that's getting ruined by the drunks, you know? Right, right. But that's you where know? things are different with you because <clears throat> you guys were passionate about it and that's what separates what you were doing from most everybody else, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, but the, it's back to the freedoms. I mean, so we have a lot of freedoms. So the freedoms are to abuse it. But at the same mm -hmm. time, you know, there's a freedom to do the right thing. Whereas, I mean, you can't even get vitamins in the UK above their RDA, which is about nothing, you know? So, I mean, you know, f you know, we, they just don't have the freedoms in other countries mm -hmm. to buy really effective nutritionals. Interesting. Now, w the one thing that I know, you know, it's, there's a lot of work that goes into creating and doing what you guys do. What are some of the processes, you know, from testing? What are some of the things that go into creating a supplement product? Well, it depends on what you're what you're into. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of people that uh, can you can shortchange it. I mean, I know right now what I've been selling for the last four years is is a total nutrition shake because I believe in the nutrition shake as a model. Mm -hmm. uh, I also know it's one of the hardest things there is to make out there in the world. And you know, it took me a year, fifty seven flavor revisions, fifty seven total revisions, wow. and a million dollars invested to build full strength. And I know guys that will go out and build um, a nutrition shake in three weeks. You know, I mean, they'll have it. They'll have it on the shelf in three weeks. Yeah, that's you know, definitely not a not a good thing to have there. Um, so well, we, that's the way it works. You know. Yeah. So going back internationally, okay, you were doing that. You finally cutting through. You're making some headway, doing really well, and you were traveling. At what point was it where you're like, all right, 
you know, time for me to maybe try something a little different, step away from, from this. Well, I mean, the company got sold in 99, 2000, really. Yeah. And, you know, we just got Body for Life out and had reached a couple of Super Bowls with the Broncos. And we were on the on the, on the high road and on a track, you know, and um, boom, we're gone, you know. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a given when you sell something like that, that the founders and family are going to be on the road. And, uh, you know, which was fine, but it was, you know, it was kind of a weird, it's a weird time. And uh, so, you know, I just set forth to use my technology background and kind of got into some online models and technology models that, you know, have been, you know, I think they're really pioneering. I was a little bit ahead of my time in some of them. Um, and then I got into another supplement company behind that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've been doing some version of this for the last 10 years, you know, back and forth. So it, it's both a good time to get out. And, um, you know, you kind of wonder what you could have done with five more years, too. Right. Now, you were doing some online things, you know, once you left there. I'm kind of curious, what were some of those things that you were doing? Well, I'd done a, um, a model called Neutros, Nutrient Organized Search, which was kind of like a, uh, an intense supplement review model online that really would help you find all the truth about what the supplement is, what the science is, connect it to all the products, and help you focus and organize everything around the benefit and function you wanted to have. So it was kind of a user-created model. Instead of, instead of being sold a product, I wanted to be position a result based on what I need. Mm. Um, very kind of fourth dimensional coding and system. And uh, I mean, I had to write massive amounts of data and and put all the science together and put all the ingredient amounts with the products and put all the science and body behind it. It was cool as hell. And the prototype ran like, a, like unbelievably great. And then getting it actually onto the web in early mm -hmm. web era was a chore because, you know, it was it was a little bit in the 3D, 4D coding model because I had to look from all these different directions. And while I understood it all on paper and the prototype all ran, getting it online just beat the hell out of me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, There's... it's just, you know, it, and it's a different day. Today, today's a different age. I mean, there was no WordPress back then. There was no, you know, rapid development tools. There was no Ruby on Rails. There was nothing, you know, it was basically, it was, it was the early days of the web in 2000, 2001. And, and that was a challenge, man. Right, and that's when they say people are like, oh, the people who've been, you know, online, the most successful are the ones who've been in it from the beginning of the game. It's easier for them to get all those customers and clients, but what people don't realize is it was, like you said, it was hell trying to get everything set up online. So. Oh, man, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a chore. So I did that, and then I rolled that into a supplement line. Um, I helped uh, start Isatory products down there. Steve, Steve's still cranking that. Mm -hmm. Got out of that about five years ago, six years ago. Hell, I don't even know. And um, I've been doing some version of writing books and uh, right. selling full strength ever since. Right. Now, you were, when you were doing this stuff early on online, um, did you have a team of people helping you? I mean, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I, yeah, I, had I would a, hope so. So yeah. tell me a little bit about the team and what you had helping you out there. Well, I mean, I had a staff, you know, like I brought some guys from EAS with me and we um, had some coders, developers, design people, um, writers, uh, and then a lot of contract writers and support, you know, to, to write all the science product. And uh, then, you know, I would uh, outsource to a lot of the big development companies. Um, so, you know, there was a huge teams there to develop this stuff. And, you know, that was the days when, like, if you wanted a, a personal web page with five pages, it was going to cost you 25 grand or 50 grand, right? You know, and it's, I mean, that's a whole different world. Now you throw up a WordPress in an afternoon. Yeah. So um, it's minutes. crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a whole different universe, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, there had to be a huge staff of people. And that was that was a quite an undertaking. And, uh, you know, learned a hell of a lot. And I think it was a, a way ahead of its product uh, time product. Very cool. But, man, what a, you know, I could have done something better with my time in hindsight, too. Right. But were you focusing on what you were strong and I mean obviously you had the coding the technical background and did you basically fill in the holes with the people things that you weren't that great at um I tried you know I okay. mean it's in hindsight what I see is um I saw what I was trying to do clearer than mm. anybody else saw it and I thought they saw it because they saw parts of it but you know I was the only guy holding the glue together that could see all the four dimensions of what I was trying to do right. and so everybody saw a part of it and then I, I realized they couldn't see the whole so it was kind of like some one guy saw the tail one guy saw the elephant trunk <laughs> the other guy saw the leg you know and yeah. I thought well they must see the elephant because I see the elephant right you know and so you know over time I've come to figure out I I think a little faster and mm. more complex than most people I, I hang out with All right so from there what was the next venture or thing that you decided to go into? 
Um, next thing I went into was uh, having kids. That was a venture. <laughs> 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 I, I decided that um, wife and kids might be a, a venture. So actually, it was the timing was kind of getting out of the the company that mm -hmm. you know. So Neutros spawned Isatory, which you know is still out there as a product company. Um, I got tired of the uh, supplement business, didn't really want to be in it, and uh, Steve, who'd started it with me, wanted to be in it more, so I sold it off to him, and I, uh, we had a son that was, you know, he's seven and a half years old now, and I've got a daughter who's three, and been married for eight years, and that's uh, that took a couple years after I got out of Isatory. Right, well, congrats. That's a family's a great thing, so. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's business-like in that, too, so. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, my son's a little too young to help me with business yet. You know, yeah, so. yeah, and you can't really outsource some of that stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, would be interesting, but you're not going to be able to. <laughs> um, all right. So from there, you're raising a family. I want to know. I mean, brother, you're doing body for life type type of thing. Where did the strength for life idea come from? Is that like a 2.0 version of that, or where was that model well, coming from? Um, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, really, there's, uh, you know, and this is kind of a diversion, and I'm going to run a little side with this. I picked up in 99 um, a little bit of study, kind of the Eastern uh, philosophy. I've gotten into the, you know, I'm not a practicing Buddhist, but I get the whole Buddhist philosophy. And I'd gone into, because of my location here, I'm in Golden, just a little bit ways from Boulder, and Boulder's kind of the hub of the Integral movement. And Integral is a Ken Wilber concept, a uh, guy, it's big probably the world's most published philosopher, and he has this thing called integral theory. And the integral theory studies uh, different dimensions of, of our life, inside, outside dimensions, and breaks it down into a lens. And I started studying integral theory and Buddhism and all this stuff, and I started realizing that there was a, um, something more to this whole physical element, and it was kind of an integration of body, mind, spirit, inside, self-culture, nature. So I kind of put all these together, and I became a speaker for the Integral Institute, and um, um, so that, that was a big part of what I did for three or four years, and I still am involved with the integral movement out of Boulder. But um, that was kind of the the what for me led to strength for life, which was, you know, kind of getting going from a subject view to an object view on 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 the training to get a more clear view of who how how do you arise as the individual inside the training. So it's a it's I think of what I what I put together strength for life is more of a of a pointing and guiding instructions for. Um, fitness freedom than it is another plan to follow. Um, so I'd been working on this kind of stuff and writing for years. And then I had a really when I got into Strength for Life, the idea around Strength for Life was um, my first kick was I wanted to write a what I call a man's guide to life in the second half. Because coming up on the 40s and midlife, I realized that once you cross about 36, nobody in the world gives a crap about a guy. Nobody markets anything to them except for AARP when you're 50. Nobody has any instructions. Nobody knows what to do. Nobody, you know, all the supplement products are marketed to a 22 year old or 18 year old. Um, and there's just nothing. And I said, so where's where's the guy, the guy's guide? You know, where do you wake up to that? So I went in, when I went to New York and pitched it all and did all the book pitches, um, it came out with, well, I love what you're talking about. I love all your stuff. This is great. Um, yeah, can you make it more? Um, you know, more body for life, like, you know, mm -hmm. more general in the presentation, you know, can you open it up to men and women and stuff, you know, and I figured, you know, when they put a big enough check in front of me, I said, yeah, sure, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hate to say I sold out, but it was the reality was, you know, right. it, it was the book they wanted. And um, in some ways, you know, I'm, I, I still want to do my man's guide specifically. Mm -hmm. But what I got in Strength for Life was, you know, uh, I think uh, a really, truly, transformational book and in in the challenge of strength for life you know really was to bring everything that i've ever learned in 20 years and bring it all into instructions that people could see understand that the that the most evolved trainer would get value and satisfaction out of and then the newbie would get access to but then i had to in the middle of that i had to bring in the body for life so i had to embrace mm -hmm. the body for lifers and take them to the next level so i mean it was a it was a formidable challenge i mean nothing short of uh pulling a rabbit out of a hat believe me was it the body for life did that at least help open up i mean it created some problems in terms of what you were doing but did it also help open up a few doors in terms of reaching out and getting some publishers for the book oh hell yeah oh okay. hell yeah yeah i mean you know you walk in with uh a little of that you know which is hence the term of the name you know i mean yeah. uh you know i mean i had uh, a lot of other titles and i like the word strength i mean i picked up the on the meme of strength six years ago and i said you know the next dimension is not going to be body 
um, it's, it's really about strength because I think, and I define strength in my book, I think of it as, you know, more than health, more than just physical. I think of it an abundance of body, mind, spiritual capacity, you know, um, energy. So I think strength is the dimension. So I wanted strength in the title and I wanted the book to be about strength from the inside out. Um, but I had a lot of other titles, but strength for life came up and I both hated it and loved it. And mm-hmm. I, and I get it and, and it does work and it does fit. And I've, and I've had a love hate with it, but so be it, you know? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,